Hi, my name's Becky Platt. I'm an advanced clinical practitioner in paediatric A&E. In this video, I'm going to talk about intraosseous access in children. The use of IO is accepted practice in cardiac arrest now, but I think that we should probably think about it a bit earlier in collapsed children as well. So it's a useful procedure to know. There are just a few contraindications. The first one is if there's fracture in that bone. The second one is if there's any infection in the overlying skin, or if there's an inability to identify the landmarks for any reason, or if the child's had an IO in that site in the last 48 hours. So really for us, that means that if they had one in the pre-hospital setting, or at least an attempt at one. In that situation, we can usually just go uh, to a proximal site on the same limb or use a different site. There are a few complications, uh, potentially. Pain is the biggest one, and in a conscious child, I tend to use some subcutaneous lidocaine uh, prior to insertion, and then to give some further lidocaine via the IO and just let it sit there for about 60 seconds before the first flush, because that's the most painful bit. Extravasation is another potential complication, and that can result in compartment syndrome. It's not usually a problem in short-term use, um, so just keep monitoring. Sometimes the limb can start to feel a bit tense while you're actively giving fluid, but it does subside. So just keep an eye on it and stop it if it's getting worse. Other complications include infection and fracture, but remember this is a potentially life-saving procedure, so there is a balance to be struck here. There are four sites that we use in children. By far the most common is the proximal tibia, and the landmark there is one to two centimetres below the tibial tuberosity on the medial surface where it's a bit flatter. We can often use uh, the distal femur, sometimes the proximal humerus, and rarely the distal tibia. IO needles come in three sizes. Uh, there's a 15 millimetre pink needle, a 25 millimetre blue needle, and a 45 millimeter yellow needle. The guidance from the manufacturers is to use the pink needle in babies and children up to 39 kilos. I have to say, uh, I usually find that the pink needles are really only useful in quite small infants, usually up to a few months of age. And I tend to be reaching for a blue uh, in any baby who's over a few months of age who's started to look a bit chubby. So, you know, a normal baby. Yellows can be useful for anyone with either lots of subcutaneous fat or where there's some swelling or edema. Um, and I last used a yellow uh, in the femur of a 23 month old who was quite chubby and that worked really well. Along the shaft of the needle itself, uh, there are several black lines at five millimetre intervals, and you should be able to see at least one black line visible when the needle is through the skin and resting on the bone. That tells you that you've got enough length to get into the intraosseous space. So let's have a look at the procedure now. Once you've got your kit set up, I tend to give the Easy IO a quick whiz to make sure that it's going to work when I want it to. And then I release the screw part from the needle so that I know it's gonna come apart easily when I'm ready for it to. And the needle fits onto the drill with a magnet. Once you've identified your landmarks, then just give the skin a clean as you would for cannulation. The key point now is not to go near the trigger with your finger until you're ready and on the bone. Get through the skin, rest on the bone, and then just give a quick whiz with some downward pressure until you feel a give and then stop. Unscrew the needle and take it out. You can aspirate at that point and then apply the dressing. Note that the needle is standing up on its own without support. In the tibia, put the dressing with the curved part just under the knee and the pointy part of the triangle down the leg because it fits a bit better. And then just attach the extension and give a good firm flush. 
it's going to feel quite stiff at first as you break up all that intraosseous mesh. That's okay. We'll have a look at the manual technique as well as it is still used occasionally, so it's useful to know. The key point with this technique is to hold the needle near the tip rather than on the plastic head so you've got better control. And again, get through the skin, rest on the bone and use a firm twisting motion just until you feel a give. Remove the needle and it should stand firm without support. You can aspirate at that point. Then again, attach the extension set and give a good firm flush. Remember, the pressure is going to be high at that point. Now the real challenge with these manual needles is getting them secure because they don't come with their own dressing. So I tend to use the barrel of two syringes, one either side of the needle and then just tape across them. That stops the needle wobbling about and protects it a bit in the busy recess room. And you can see how that looks. In theory, it is possible to take samples from the IO and you can send uh, samples that you would send uh, of venous blood in the same way. Just let the lab know that it's an IO sample, uh, not a venous sample. In practice, either you tend to get nothing out at all or you get a tiny amount that's enough for a glucose and not much more. If you get a little bit more than that, you can send a gas but it absolutely can't go in the gas machine. You just need to send it to the lab for processing. In terms of top tips now, the first one, absolutely don't drill until you're on the bone. Get through the skin, rest on the bone, and then drill. If it feels firm, it's in. Don't worry if there's no aspirate. As I said, sometimes you get a tiny little splat uh, and nothing more, but if the needle's standing firm without support, that's the key. Keep checking the soft tissues. If you've got any concerns about that limb getting tense or swollen, then take it out and get alternative access. Thank you so much, I hope you found that useful. And if you liked this video, please subscribe to see more from us.